What's up guys, Zio here with week 6 of the NES. Uh, this week we are taking on Super Nerd 92 coach of the Seattle Sigalifts. Um, we've played him a ton on the channel, um, and we've had a ton of practice against him on the channel because he's been our practice partner since like very early in Season 1. Um, so this game is definitely not going to be an easy game. Um, and he also has a very hard team as well as a very <laughs> surprising team, I guess. Um, I'll go ahead and get into what I brought before I preview the rest of his team, um, but just as kind of like a fourth wall break, I'm actually recording this before I'm recording the week 5 post-com, because week 5 kind of happened late, and week 6 kind of happened a little bit earlier than normal, um, so <laughs> this is going to be a little bit weird for me, but um, if, like if I start mixing up sets and stuff, it's because I have to think about two different weeks, <laughs> so sorry. Uh, but first up, we have Ghost DMZ, Kafagragus with Trick Room, Nasty Plot, Shadow Ball, and HP Ice, Max HP, Max Special Attack, and a little bit of Spadef. Um, this Ghost DMZ Kofag basically like can get a kill on his team if I can get rid of Mega Audino, um, which is it's his Mega by the way. Um, so I have to be kind of careful around that, <laughs> but other than that, uh, like if he goes hard uh, crocodile on me and I get a nasty plot up, HP Ice Okos, um, if he goes into combo on me because he's immune to Shadow Ball, goes DMZ into HP Ice Okos, or Tukos I guess. Um, but basically Ghost DMZ hits everything but Crocodile really hard, and then HP Ice can kind of just Oko it depending on if I get a nasty plot up. Um, next up is Ambo Palm with one of the items I'm probably most excited that I've ever brought. Um, I'm bringing Protective Pads Ambo Palm with Tail Slot, Fake Out, Low Kick, and Acrobatics. Um, 84 HP, 252 attack, um, mixed defenses, and 164 plus speed to be able to outspeed. Um, is the next fastest thing from Torn, I believe, if I remember right. Uh, so basically, if you don't know, Protective Pads is an item that was introduced in Gen 7, and I've personally never really seen it in a competitive battle, um, but given how much Nerd has used Rocky Helmet, and given how good Rocky Helmet can be against how physical my team is, at least as of this battle, <laughs> spoilers, um, I figured he was going to be bringing at least Rocky Helmet on one of his like three or four Intimidate Mons. Um, probably not Crocodile, but I can definitely see it on Arcanine this game. Um, and if he had brought Vile Bloom this game, since he brought it all the time, I could definitely have seen it on there. Um, but Protective Pads basically makes it so uh, moves that are contact moves suddenly are not contact moves. Um, so I basically just ignore the Rocky Helmet damage and stuff, um, which is good because that can wear down ammo bomb pretty fast with Technician. Um, I'm Skill Link, or yeah, I'm, it can wear it down with Skill Link, but I'm Technician so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Got that backwards. Um, next up is Mega Alakazam with Focus Blast, Psychic, Dazzling Gleam, and Hidden Power Electric. Um, max Special Attack, Max Speed, and a little bit of Spadef. Um, the interesting thing about this Mega Alakazam, and it actually unfortunately will come into play this game, is I'm Timid instead of Modest, which basically means that I'm able to outspeed Como -O and Gyarados at plus one. Um, I didn't want those things to get out of hand because like, I don't have great answers to them if they get set up. Um, like my best wall for Gyarados would be Miltank, which didn't come this week, and then combo a plus one obviously just like shreds through Miltank. <laughs> so um, I had to be um, timid this week so Mega Alakazam could outspeed that and Oko. Um, I'm not really used to timid Mega Alakazam because I've been able to run Modest every other week, but I'll make it work. Um, next up is Assault Vest Tapu Fini with Moon Blast, Surf, Hidden Power Ground, and Ice Beam. Uh, max HP, Max Special Attack, and Force. Uh, speed basically <laughs> um, so this set's basically just meant to kind of be um, an overall pivot to his team um, I expected this game to be pretty hyper offensive so I didn't really think that like the lack of recovery would really matter that much um, otherwise I would have just run leftovers or something like that um, and since I was already like <laughs> I was already already wanting to run Moonblast, Ice Beam, and Hidden Power Ground anyway, I figured I might as well run Surf and get the special bulk to be able to take some stuff a little bit better. Um, like if that Magneton is any kind of offensive, I'm not going to want to stay in on it, but if it's a standard to violate set, I can actually kind of stay in on it a little bit better and Hidden Power Ground, which is nice. Um, and then finally, we have two Scarfers with Scarf Flygon and Scarf Cartana. Scarf Flygon has Rock Slide, Dragon Claw, Earthquake, and U-Turn. Um, basically enough speed to outspeed everything that I would need to with a Scarfer. 
Um, and then Scarf Cartana has Smart Strike, Sacred Sword, Leaf Blade, and Psycho Cut. Um, because that hits pretty much everything but Arcanine pretty hard. Um, if you're wondering how, what I'm going to do to Arcanine, spoilers, I don't really know. <laughs> I also don't really know what to do to Torn if it's a Scarf Tornadus. Um, and I also was not really expecting Mega Audino at all. Um, so heading into this game, I realized that this was going to be a very uphill battle because he has a lot of stuff that's really versatile. He has a lot of stuff that I'm going to kind of have to play kind of slowly around to try to figure out what set it is first before I can try to figure out how to attack it. Um, and honestly, like at team preview, I'm really, really wishing that I didn't have Scarf Cartana and I had like any other set. Um, Scarf or this Cartana set was originally Sword Stance with Adrenaline Orb to take advantage of his Intimidate Mons. Um, but I realized even if I got a Sword Stance up, he switched into Arcanine, I got the plus one speed boost and like basically plus one attack because Intimidate would knock me down one. It still didn't really do anything, I guess. Um, and since Adrenaline Orb was a one-time use item, I realized that Scarf might be a little bit better. Um, but uh, given the team that he actually ended up bringing, it kind of <laughs> backfired a little bit. Um, so because I'm suddenly like very terrified of Scarf Tornadus and realized that my team prep for it wasn't really the best, um, my practice lead of Scarf Flygon is kind of not really that good of a Scarf lead anymore. Um, basically every game in practice I was able to just get a U-turn off even if he was regular Tornadus and just like went for a U-turn or whatever. Um, I would outspeed, go for a U-turn, go into my Tabu Finny or something like that. Um, and then even if he went for a slower U-turn after that it didn't really matter as much I guess. Um, but since this team is somewhat weak to um, Assault Vest Tabu Finny outside of Magneton, who could be a lead if he just wants to Volt Switch, but um, would be kind of a fairly risky lead if I was going to lead Flygon. Um, I end up leading Tapu Fini um, as he leads Tornadus, which is fine. Um, I'm Assault Vest, so I can basically take everything he wants to go for. Um, I am kind of hoping that he's Z-Move, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm kind of praying at this point that he's just like Z-Move, like Z-Sludge Wave or something like that. Um, thinking that he can pick up an Oko on me with the damage, uh, but because I'm a Salt Vest, it won't really do that much. Um, and because I'm offensive Salt Vest, I can actually kill with an Ice Beam. Um, so I'm going to try to go for that, but he just makes the safe play and just goes for a U-turn into Audino. As you can see, that does nothing. And we are about to experience all of the fun of Mega Audino in one very long battle. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep this going for a little bit longer. Um, he starts wish passing around um, because I figure he's going to go into defensive Arcanine, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, I just go for the fake out because, I mean, honestly, it's not really going to matter anyway. Uh, like, unless I went for a tail slap and got like five crits in a row, Mega Audino is basically going to heal up damage from pretty much anything. Um, and I'm going to be honest, I wasn't 100% sure if his initial switch into my Ambipalm was going to be Arcanine or Magneton. Um, maybe even Como, because Como does actually have some pretty good defense. Um, so I wasn't 100% sure what his initial switch was going to be. I kind of figured it was going to be a defensive Intimidate Arcanine. Um, if, like, especially when he went, like, kind of hard into it. Uh, but because I'm protective pads, I assume that he's Rocky Helmet now. Um, but because I'm protective pads, I actually don't take any damage from that. So not really any harm there. I'm kind of just trying to feel out the beginning of this game, I guess. Um, so Kapagrius is my good switch in here because I don't really know what he's going to go for. But if he does go for an extreme speed, it's nice. Um, if he is choice banded or something right now, I know I can get a free nasty plot up. Um, so I... I should go for a Nasty Plot, but because I'm a Nasty Plot Trick Room set and I predict him to go into Crocodile here, um, I end up kind of making a slight misplay pretty early in the game and just going for Trick Room immediately. Um, I kind of want to explain why I went for Trick Room and then why I shouldn't have gone for Trick Room, I guess. Um, so my thought process was he doubles into Crocodile here, I go for a Trick Room, he goes for a knockoff because I'm a Z Crystal user or whatever. Um, it only does 65 damage instead of whatever it's supposed to do. Um, so I'm able to live pretty comfortably, get the nasty plot up then, and then just go for the HP ice and wipe him out. And then whatever he goes into after that, I can go for a Ghost DMZ Shadow Ball and do decent damage to it. And then Kafagrius drops. 
The reason that was an issue though is because if he went hard Arduino like this and then I set up the trick room, now I'm kind of stuck in with Cofagrigus and the only thing I can do is HP ice it. Um, Mega Arduino is very fat, it's like one of the very good things it's good at. Uh, so even if I get up to plus two and go for HP ices, it's still going to be like a four hit KO. Um, but if I would have at least went for the like nasty plot right away, it might have scared him a little bit in terms of staying in. Um, probably not given the set that he brought because as you're about to see, he's actually Thunder Wave Shadow Ball. Um, so we've seen Wish, Thunder Wave, and Shadow Ball from this thing at this point, uh, which is good prep on Nerd's part, like I can't really be upset about it, but it is kind of tearing apart my team a little bit early on. <laughs> um, so because he got the spadef drop also, I can't stay in, like I was planning on staying in and kind of just sacking this thing, trying to get the HP ice damage to chip it down into range of Amber Palm killing, um, but because I got paralyzed and because I got a spadef drop, that plan is kind of uh, quickly out the window here. Um, so. I want to go into Ambipom, but because he just showed Shadow Ball, I need to get Misty Terrain up first. So I have to go into Tapu Fini first to be able to block Misty Terrain, or to be able to block Thunder Wave. Um, he goes for Shadow Ball, which is fine, um, but as I pivot out into Ambipom, he goes for a Wish, and then is just able to pivot right back out into whatever he wants to go out into. Um, Fake Out does a fuck ton of damage, and it's like at that point that I'm kind of wishing I would have just went for a Tail Slap. Um, because if I would have gotten a decent Tail Slap roll, I might have been able to kill Torn from full. Um, I should have actually probably ran that calc before this game, um, because I actually do have notes, but I wasn't really thinking about that one. But if Fake Out did 43, um, I'm pretty sure even like a 3 or a 4 hit roll from Tail Slap would have killed. Um, and obviously given how big of an issue Torn is to my team, um, that probably would have been a good thing to go for. Uh, but I just play it safe again for some reason and go for a fake out. Uh, because Ampalm is very important, I have to switch out here, even though it's predictable. And in my Tapu Fini, because I can take whatever he wants to go for. Um, rinse and repeat, this time he goes into Magneton, because why wouldn't you go into Magneton on Tapu Fini? Um, if he's like a standard Aviolite set, um, which he may be, I guess, um, then I should be able to do like 80% damage with an HP ground, live a Thunderbolt, not well, but live a Thunderbolt and then kill with the next HP ground. Um, but the issue is, is if he's analytic, he'll actually kill me here. And I'm not 100% sure, like, this thing could actually be either of its, or any of its three abilities, I guess. Because um, it is a little bit slower, so Analytic manages to do a lot of damage to my team, which is pretty fast overall. Um, Sturdy is good if I manage to not get rocks up, because then it's not okayed by anything. And then Magnet Pull is good if it wants to trap Cartana, if I lock myself into something that it can resist or whatever. Um, so... <laughs> As scary as it is, I kind of have to play this Magneton assuming that it's kind of all three abilities right now and kind of try to figure out which one it is from there. Um, so since I'm afraid of Analytic, I end up switching out and just sacking Cofagrigus here. Um, the damage I get from Thunderbolt doesn't really tell me anything besides he probably has Spatak investment. Um, so I'm just going to try to get some momentum in this game since everything's kind of been going against me so far. Um, and I'm just going to go for a U-turn here. Um, the Earthquake's pretty damn obvious, so I feel like I kind of have to go for a U-turn to try to get some momentum into this Torn. Um, so, I want to explain this one because this is actually one of the few, like, plays in this game that I'm, like, really proud of. Um, so, you may be wondering, why did I go Kartana if I think Torn is scarfed and Torn can pretty much Oko with, like, whatever it wants to go for? Um, so, first, I need to see if this thing is scarfed because I need to kind of be able to play around it accordingly. Um, if I can confirm that it's even choice locked, not even necessarily that it's scarfed, but if I can kind of confirm that it's choice locked, it makes it a little bit easier to play around because um, I can just kind of predict what it wants to go for hope it's not U-turn most of the time pretty much um, and then kind of play around it accordingly so I go Kartana here assuming that he wants to either go for a heat wave or an incinerate or something like that um, and then I'm going to double into Tapu Fini and kind of judge what he does after he goes for a dark pulse which is kind of surprising I guess because I wasn't really about to go Mega Alakazam um, and then I make a misplay off of my prediction. I should have doubled into Kartana again, expecting Audino to come in since it had come in every other time. But because I thought Nerd 
didn't want to be predictable. I thought he was going to double straight into Magneton that time, um, being a defensive set or whatever, take my hit and then just Volt Switch out and kind of just keep the Volt Turn combo going because I didn't really have anything to stop it at this point. Um, but since he just went Audino on my HP ground, I'm forced to kind of switch out and keep things going here. Um, there's not really very much I can do but go Kartana right now. Um, and as you're about to see uh, with Arcanine, it is an Intimidate Rocky Helmet set, which is kind of nice because at least that means that my Protective Pets actually did something. Um, it's kind of terrible for Kartana because this Kartana, Kartana literally can't touch Arcanine at all. Um, it's like at this point in the battle right here that I'm like, why the fuck didn't I have something like to even punish Arcanine? <laughs> like even if I would have had like Toxic on Kartana and just waited for Misty Terrain to run out, at least that would have been something for Arcanine. If I would have had Tailwind, I could have at least pivoted out and had something faster. I don't know. So should have had, could have had, didn't have, it's whatever. I'm just gonna go Flygon because I doubt that he goes for an HP Ice or something on that switch and I can try to get some U-turn momentum again. Um, I might as well, I guess, because I'm not really getting anything else anyway. Um, but trying to make a play, <laughs> sorry, I had notes and I guess I got a little shuffled in my notes. So trying to make a play here, I realized that he's probably going to go Torn. And if he goes Torn, the U-turn loop kind of just continues and I'm not really getting anywhere. So if I go for a rock slide, even if even if he stays in it still does pretty decent damage to arcanine um it doesn't kill but it does pretty decent damage if he does switch into torn it's a two hit ko which is nice um given that i've seen u-turn and dark pulse so far i'm not really sure what his other coverage is but i assume it's probably something like knockoff and hurricane because that's a little bit more standard i guess um so if i can stay in if i can see if this thing's even choice scarfed first of all because it could be choice specs um i'm not exactly 100 percent sure of the damage but since Tapu finney with the salt vest has been my switch and since he's only really gone for resisted moves so far um i'm not 100 percent sure if he's scarf or specs or just bluffing and is a z move because torn's a really good z move user um so i'm gonna stay in and go for the rock slide Unfortunately, that's an over prediction and I'm really, really upset with myself at that one because I didn't really gauge out the other half of his moveset and Tornadus has an incredibly wide moveset with a bunch of different special moves. Um, and in hindsight, Scarf Torn with Icy Wind makes a ton of sense because it would just outspeed plus one Flygon. And I don't really know why I didn't think of that in prep, but I didn't, so there's that, I guess. Um, so trying to make a play here because it's quickly 6-4 and the score is a little bit more in his favor than even just me being down two mons because I don't even really know if I've done like damage to his team at this point. Because um, when he switches out with Torn, he's going to be back up to like 68%. Um, Arcanine has like 25% damage maybe and then Audino has like a little bit at this point. Um, so I'm running calcs and I realize that um, Timid Psychic still is a two-hit KO, or Psychic into something else is a two-hit KO on anything on his team. Um, but I figure if I'm running those calcs, given how well Nerd is prepped so far, he probably knows those calcs as well. And I think it's almost like a sure thing that he goes into uh, Crocodile here. If he doesn't, it's cool. Um, like, I can live in Icy Wind pretty comfortably, especially since it's Scarf, and then just switch out or something. Um, but I predict him to switch out for sure here because he doesn't want to take a Psychic and lose Torn when how when it's super important. Um, and I expect him to go into Crocodile, so I actually go for a Focus Blast. Unfortunately, he just keeps going Mega Audino because it just walls my team. Um, I ran the Calc based on that damage, and it seems like if I could have gotten decent rolls, two Psychics would have killed. Um, but I guess it was pretty safe for him to just go Audino and either wish stall me or kind of try to catch me on a Psychic and go into Crocodile a little bit more comfortably. Um, I tried to play a little bit aggressively because that Crocodile still is a problem if it's a double Scarf set, which I kind of expect his team to be, um, at least how he's been playing it at this point. Um, but since I can't kill with a Psychic, I'm forced right back out. Um, I tried to make a play here. I'm going to actually rewind this a little bit because I need to kind of explain this one a little bit more. Um, so I try to make a play on this turn because every other turn I've gone into Tapu Fini and he just wishes and then passes into something else. 
It's not getting me anywhere. Like, it's gradually wearing down Mega Adino, because at this point he may not have Protect if he hasn't gone for it yet. Um, like, it's gradually wearing it down, but it's still not actually getting me anywhere, and all of the rest of his team is in, like, a full health, so it's kind of annoying. Um, so what I try to do on this turn, and kind of already got spoiled because I forgot to pause it right, um, but what I try to do on this turn is double into Ambipalm on his Wish, and then as he tries to Wish Pass into something, whatever, as long as it's not Arcanine, I should be able to Oko with the Tail Slap. Um... And if it's Magneton, I still should be able to do decent enough damage to the point where I can just kill it with a low kick next turn, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so I try to double into Ambipalm, predicting him to predict me to go into Tapu Fini. He reads me really well and just decides to go for a Thunder Wave. Um, at the time, I thought this was a pretty risky play since every other time I had gone into Tapu Fini, but I guess he read me well and realized that I kind of needed to do something <laughs> to stop this... Audino from just continuously wish passing. Um, so, my main win con at this point is paralyzed. Mega Alakazam's good, but is kind of under speeding a lot of his team. Kartana's pretty much fucking useless this game because I didn't put Tailwind or anything on it to deal with Arcanine. And Tapu Fini is like at half health and kind of like my only pivot at this point. Um, so all I can really do is try to do some kind of damage to his team since I can either try to kill if he stays in and wish passes or just do some kind of damage to stuff. But as you're seeing, like, I'm not really getting anywhere this game. Um, like, Nerd just built a really good pivot team. I didn't bring rocks because I didn't realize how fucking important they would be. Um, and I'm not really, like, <laughs> getting anywhere at all. Um, so... It's at this point that I have to predict Audino coming in, because, like, Audino's kind of come in every other time. I want to go for a Surf, but Surf's not a two-hit KO, and if he just goes for a Wish Pass in Tacoma O and has, like, a Poison move or a Z Poison move at this point, he actually kills. Or, more likely, he can just Wish Pass into Magneton and Volt Switch out on me, especially since Flygon's dead. Um, so, predicting Audino to come in, I have to go into Kartana on Arcanine. Luckily it does, um, unluckily for me, I can't really afford to not go for a smart strike because I kind of have to kill that thing. Um, Rocky Helmet is just slowly wearing me down and forcing me to kind of pivot around all over the place. Um, predicting the wild charge, I actually went Ambipom there because I don't really know what this move set on this Arcanine is at this point. Um, so I was able to take a wild charge and then fake out into Tail Slap. Might actually kill depending on the rolls that I get. Um, <laughs> like, I really don't love that all of my offense this game is coming from Tail Slap because um, that's not really how it worked in practice, and I kind of just, like, forced the issue of this game, I think. Um, so he goes for a Morning Sun. I get paralyzed because that's what Thunderwave does. It's whatever. Um, he goes for an Extreme Speed, and I get a Tail Slap. And as you can see, if I didn't actually get paralyzed on that turn, um, if I would have gotten... Like, it would have had to have been pretty high rolls, because I would have either had to get a 4-4 four, four tail slap or a 5-3 tail slap. Um, but if I had gotten the right rolls, Arcanine would have been dead. Um, it would have required a lot of luck, but, I mean, I was already kind of playing around with Paralysis anyway, so I wasn't really expecting to get, like, all of the hits I needed for that. Um, but Arcanine is down, and predicting the Morning Sun to come and I actually try to Trace Intimidate, so I can live at extreme speed, so I can actually try to get some damage off on stuff. Now, I'm just going to go for the Psychic, since he's clearly just going Mega Audino every time. Um, and Crocodile comes in, because that's what Crocodile does <laughs> after you kill something with Psychic, I guess. Um, and it's at this point that I realize I really need to make a play this game. Because even though the score is 5-4, to four, which, like, isn't really that bad, <laughs> um, I'm, like, very far behind in terms of really having a win con this game. <laughs> um, like, Mega... Alakazam is very good and can hypothetically Oko anything on the team right now. But the problem is, is this is probably a Scarf Crocodile. It's definitely a Scarf Torn. And Arcanine has extreme speed. Magneton's still at full. So unless I can try to get some damage off on it, I'm not going to be able to kill it with anything. And Como hasn't touched the field yet, so I don't really know what it is. Um, so... <laughs> 
bringing that all back around, it's at this point that I realize that I kind of have to make sure that this turn goes right for me. Um, I can switch out, but if he pursuits, I die. Like there, I, it's like a minimum, like 130% with pursuit if I switch out, but I'm able to live a pursuit if I stay in because I have just like a decent amount, enough of bulk. Um, so that's, <laughs> That's 50-50 number one is if he's going to go for a pursuit or not. Because he's either probably going to go for a pursuit or a knockoff at this point, I figure. Uh, unless he like wants to try to just get safe damage off on the top of Finny who's potentially coming in, I guess. Uh, but it's at this point that I'm basically just got to lock down to pursuit or knockoff because he's trying to either kill the Mega Alakazam who stays in or kill the Mega Alakazam who switches out. So. With that in mind, there's also another 50-50 that I have to do on top of that if I want to go for Focus Blast or Dazzling Gleam. Um, I made the Focus Blast play earlier in the game um, when I Mega Evolved and just went for Focus Blast straight up. So he knows that I have that. Um, he doesn't know that I have Dazzling Gleam though, which is a 100% accurate move, but it's not 100% accurate to kill, or it's not 100% guaranteed to kill. Um, I think it's actually somewhere like a 30, like a 35% chance to Oko. But if I go for Dazzling Gleam and it doesn't kill, I can just fake out with Ambipom next turn and kill it off and whatever. So 50-50 number one is if he's going to pursue, knock off, or go for something else that I just die for anyway. 50-50 number two is if I do stay in, do I go for the Focus Blast, which if it lands is a guaranteed kill. Or the Dazzling Gleam, which is guaranteed to land, but is not a guaranteed kill. So, I've kind of backed myself into a really bad corner here. I end up opting to stay in and to go for the Dazzling Gleam, because if he overpredicts, which I kind of have to have happen at this point, I'm able to potentially Oko this thing. If I don't Oko it, I die the next turn, or sack off Kartana, and I'm able to go into Amapom, get a fake out off, and then kill it off anyway. So I stay in and go for the Dazzling Gleam, as he stays in and goes for an Earthquake, which I actually live, which is kind of surprising, but he also lives at 1% and is able to kind of just, like, screw over everything, I guess. Um, so the roll wasn't really in my favor because I was timid instead of modest. If I was modest, I'm pretty sure it was a guaranteed Oko, um, but I had to make sure I was able to outspeed plus one Como and plus one Gyarados, so I wasn't able to do that. Um, and so at this point, Cartana really isn't fucking doing any like Cartana hasn't done anything all game so I might as well just try to come in and get a leaf blade off or a sacred sword or something um, so I just go for the sacred sword I get the higher roll on the rocky helmet hit and end up actually dying I was kind of hoping I could get either um, another extreme speed stalled out or just get a little bit more damage off on this thing but that's okay um, I'm going to go Tabu Fenny now because I can surf or whatever to anything. I'm not going to over predict this time because I've been over predicting all game. <laughs> and I'm just going to go for a surf. Um, he ends up going Torn here and I realize that I'm actually able to live a Grass Knot pretty comfortably here. Um, I haven't seen what all of his moves are yet, but I assume he has something to hit Tapu Fini since he just went into it. Um, and his other three moves resist, so I'm like, okay, at this point, even if he's like Grass EMZ or something, like because I'm Assault Vest, I'm able to live. Unfortunately, he shows Sludge Wave, which is good prep on his part. Um, and like, I could potentially pivot out here into Zam, sack it off, and then go for a f another fake out and turn this into a 3 0 loss. Um, but at this point, I kind of just like, I don't want to say I gave up on turn 39, but like, turning it from a 4 0 to 3 0 wasn't really the biggest thing on my mind. I was trying to figure out any chance I could have had to win it, and there just wasn't anything. So, GG, nerd. Um, Quite frankly, you kicked my ass because you prepped way better than I did and you battled way better than I did. Um, I, it's been a while since I've had a battle kind of like this, I guess, where I don't really feel like any part of it went right for me. Um, like, it's all 100% my fault because I didn't really prep as well as I could have this week. Like, we've been out trying to shop for a car and everything and it just kind of took up a little bit more time than I wanted to. Um, so, team prep wise, going forward, defensive mill tanks with rocks would have shredded this entire team except for Como. Seeing as how Como didn't touch the field at all, I don't really know if that would have affected anything, but it probably would have been a hell of a lot more useful than Kafagragus this game, like to be perfectly honest. Um, 
especially since I could have just like slapped Earthquake on it or something and made it able to hit Magneton pretty well too. Um, so <laughs> that would have been nice. I didn't see that coming or I didn't really see Mega Audino coming. So I didn't really like prep for it being as annoying of a pivot as it actually was. Um, but getting up rocks would have basically worn down uh, Torn and Arcanine to a point where I could have actually handled them a little bit better. Good to know going forward, I guess. Um, Tailwind on Kartana would have completely changed this game because I wouldn't have been as scared of Scarf Tornadus anymore. Um, like, it would have been an issue still, obviously, but like I could have basically just gotten Kartana in on anything that wasn't Tornadus, set up a Tailwind, and then suddenly would imagine even Tapu Fini at that point would probably outspeed. Um, if not, definitely Flygon, definitely um, Ambipom, and definitely Alakazam. Um, and that could have changed things too a little bit more, I guess. Um, and then finally, like if I would have been a setup Tapu Fini or a setup Mega Alakazam, I could have basically just come in at any point on that Mega Audino and set up and done some damage to stuff. Um, again, it was really just good prep on Nerd's part because he hadn't brought Mega Audino at all this season. Um, and he definitely, or if he had, he only brought it like once in practice and didn't really like it or something. Um, and he definitely hadn't brought or shown like just pure support Mega Audino. So I wasn't really as prepped for that as I should have been. Um, so <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to be harsh on myself, but also give Nerd credit because he definitely did prep and play well this game and definitely deserved the win. Um, like, I don't even really think there was any like hacks for or against either of us that like really changed anything, I guess. Um, like I could have gotten luckier with rolls, but he also could have gotten luckier with rolls, so it doesn't really matter. Um, in terms of like what I actually did do wrong in terms of the battle, um, I said I kept Fagragus way too early. Um, if it would have been able to just kind of hang out in the back until Mega Dana even was weakened like a little bit, because I don't know if he actually had, uh, I'd, like I don't know what his last move was because I haven't actually seen his side of the battle yet. Um, but he definitely didn't really have a ton for Kafagragus if I was able to basically just chip off and kill Mega Audino first. Um, but instead I'd set it up on like turn five, <laughs> um, which obviously wasn't the right thing to do. Um, I didn't really predict that well this game, in my opinion. Like there were times where I like vastly over predicted and like started trying to think like four moves ahead and then there were times where i didn't predict at all when it was a really obvious prediction um so going forward i guess i'm just gonna have to kind of take it a little bit slower um i don't even really think i rushed that much in this game but i definitely like don't think i played as well as i could have um or prepped as well as i could have i guess um so quite frankly i deserve to lose this game nerd deserved to win this game uh both sides like played fairly well I guess and like both teams are scary but he definitely had the way better prep for this game <laughs> and also like executed his plan a lot better um he also made his predictions right which were nice um I shouldn't have let Ambipom get paralyzed because then that suddenly made a lot of things a lot more annoying because then I had to play around with paralysis chance as you saw um that was more a good prediction on nerds part i think because um i had shown tapu finny every other time as a switch into that and then the one time i went ambo palm he went for thunder wave um so overall like i feel like i didn't really play with the right aggression this week and uh, the other big thing was the focus blast on um crocodile instead of dazzling or i should have focus blast instead of dazzling gleamed i guess um on crocodile when i had my galic in would have killed it and potentially made thing i don't even really know if that would have mattered honestly so like even all these things like i'm criticizing myself for like i think even if i had prep perfectly this still would have been a game nerd one um he just had better prep um i think he might actually have like pretty good type like advantage against me anyway so like i don't really know if i could have necessarily won um especially given like how well nerd prepped and played this week because i don't want to take that away from him or anything um but we get our first loss of the season. Uh, we're still five and one, so like whatever. Uh, we're still having a pretty good year, um, but unfortunately, we have to play Danny next week and the Aston Charizards, who, as of this recording, are five and zero oh, and the only team in the league ahead of us. So it's not exactly like things get easier next week. Um, I am gonna have a little bit more time to prep, thankfully, because I actually have a little bit of a vacation from work. Um, although I also am taking a three day vacation completely away from like society and everything as we're going camping. So, um, balances out, I guess. 
so sorry i lost this week guys um i feel like i didn't even really do a very good job of hiding the fact that i lost this game pretty early on um but i also kind of wanted this to be a little bit more critical of uh post -com than i've had recently um first of all because i don't feel like i really prepped as well as i should have for everything on his team especially my god you know um, like I played a couple of practice games against it, but clearly it wasn't against a cleric set because I had no idea what to do against it. Um, and I definitely have to make sure that I'm, uh, especially mixing up my Cartana sets going forward because Scarf is starting to limit me a bit. But other than that, I feel like I'm still pretty happy with stuff. Um, I'm going to actually switch it over to a team builder thing really quick because I do have a couple of small moves that I've made. Um, but overall, nothing like drastic is changing with the team. We still are five and one, so I don't want to like change anything super big. But there are some things I want to uh, tweak a little bit, so I'll switch it over to that and be right back. Hey, so this should uh, be at the end of the nerd battle, I guess. <laughs> um, so I realized after I battled nerd that I didn't really have the best um, flying resist, I guess. Um, and I've been trying to make Electivire work for that, and I actually almost brought Assault Vest Electivire this week. Hindsight's 2020, it actually probably would have worked out a little bit better than Assault Vest Top Finney, I think. Um, but overall, um, like I've been trying to make Electivire work, and it just hasn't really been working as well as I wanted it to. Um, like it hits pretty hard, but it's not hard enough to be like a wall breaker, especially with my team already kind of being a lot of physical offense as it is. Um, like its special attack's not bad, and its speed's not bad, and motor drive's a pretty good ability, and its coverage is awesome, but overall I just wasn't really finding it had like the best fit with the team personally. Um, so I decided to talk to one of the other coaches, and I decided to trade for Rotom Fan. Um, I think Rotom Fan actually fits kind of more what I want from my electric type this season a little bit better than Electivire does. Um, first of all, it also gives me another ground uh, immunity, which is kind of nice because um, at of this point, Flygon was my only one <laughs> that it actually was like even off the ground, much less a ground immunity. So basically, anything with Mole Breaker just kind of could EQ my entire team. Um, until now, thanks to Electric Flying and Levitate, um, Rotom Fan will never be hit by a ground type move. <laughs> actually, it's not true, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so. Overall, I really like Rotom Fan. Um, I had Rotom, uh, Rotom Heat last season and was pretty surprised by how much it was able to do. I kind of think Rotom Fan with Air Slash is slightly more overall beneficial than Rotom Heat with Overheat, personally. Um, just because Air Slash is a little bit more spammable of a move and it still gets all of the other Rotom support moves that kind of help out my team. Um, another thing that's kind of nice is this is still a Thunder Wave switch in, since we've seen plenty of coaches love running Thunder Wave against me this season, even though I have Tapu Finney and Heal Bell Mill Tank, but that's okay. Um, so I have an electric switch in that doesn't get a speed boost from it, but it also doesn't really like need the speed boost really. Um, it has overall better bulk, even though it has lower HP. Like I prefer the bulk of Rotom Fan, uh, especially since it actually has recovery and pain split, which is kind of nice. Um, and also benefits it having a little bit of lower HP, I guess. Um, I also wanted an electric type that could actually kind of Volt Switch around a little bit better. Um, like, I ran Volt Switch on Electivire, but unless you're, like, pure special with specs and stuff like that, it doesn't really work that well. <laughs> like, it does damage, but it doesn't really do whatever you need it to do. Um, and it just throwing it out there that it is also kind of nice that I have uh, some weather options on my team, because I didn't have those before. <laughs> Um, so overall, I think Electivire for Rotom fans is going to be a pretty low impact, but potentially high reward uh, trade for us. Um, it does technically remove an electric immunity, but seeing as how Rotom fan is neutral to it and pretty bulky anyway, like it didn't really seem like it was that big of a deal. Um, especially since Tapu Fini is my only electric, like, weak thing on my entire team. So, like, I expect people to be bringing electric moves, but I also don't really expect it to be doing a ton to the rest of my team, I guess. Um, so, it's whatever. Um, I'm pretty happy with Electivire for Rotom Fan. Um, I am still a little undecided on if there's another move that I want to make quite yet. <laughs> um, if 
there is, I guess I'll add another addendum to this. But as of right now, this is the only thing I'm planning on doing for uh, week seven. Um, I still have one free agent move left that I'm kind of thinking about doing, but I need to kind of play test a little bit more and make sure it actually works first. Um, so if this is the end of the video, thank you guys for coming by. Uh, drop a like and subscribe if you're interested. I promise next week's going to go better. Um, this week was kind of a good kick in the ass that I think I needed personally. <laughs> uh, so hopefully we can get ourselves back on track next week against a really, really, really strong opponent and kind of keep our um, good season going. Thank you guys and have a good day. Bye.